Today on Gamers Couch. Ein Fest für Odin. Don't speak that horrible German when you can do it really well or speak English. Choose a language now. Ein Fest für Odin. And now in English, please. Ein Fest für Odin. That's German. The other English. <laughs> Feast for Odin. Yeah, pronunciation, B minus, but okay. A feast for Odin. 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 <laughs> Welcome to the Goofy Gamers Couch. It's time to talk about Feast for Odin. Odin. We, we, we watched the, um, the Marvel movies. I don't know how you cannot know how to kind of pronounce the name. But that's And not English, that's British. Because it's a Kenneth Branagh movie. They always talk British in Kenneth Branagh movies. Set up the game. I'm gonna <laughs> intro the intro. He, it's one of those days where he's kind of testy with me. And that will be probably quite hilarious at some point when we battle each other. Uh, this is Daniel, by the way, if you're new to the channel and don't know who we are, Daniel, husband, Sarah, wife, board gamers, and uh, we like to talk about them and share our uh, collection bit by bit by bit and our thoughts on the different games with you every Sunday on this wonderful video podcast format. And uh, I forgot to set up a little tiny bit of the game. This is what he's doing. Now, I set up the majority of it. I built a house to put this game on because it's a big one. Anyway, before I get ahead of myself, here's uh, how this format goes in, ca in case you don't know. Um, we talk about rules and gameplay first. We show you a few turns that we play so that you get a feel for the general idea of the game and uh, see if this might be something for you. Then we talk about what we liked or not liked about this particular game and have a thumb rating. So there's the opinion part. And then we share a few funny stories and experiences that we had while playing. And this week is one of those weeks where at the end of the video, I'm going to tease the next painting that we're going to have for my other board game related show on this channel. It's called Draw for Initiative. It airs every Wednesday 9 a.m. CET and there is a game to be painted and I'm gonna tease that at the end of the video. He has to guess which one it's gonna be. But now, my love, are you ready to talk rules and gameplay? Almost. What are you missing? I'm a little irritated by the red light, uh, the, the right light being so close and awkwardly angled. <laughs> it's <laughs> awkwardly angled because this is, this is how it's angled in the studio because i sharing the lights. It's with... actually, it's more pointing towards you. I think yeah, you I'm wanna, bright. You want to have more light this time than I. I'm a dark person. I, I need to be... I see. Lit. You are so shy. You have your own halo. I have to compete with I... you. <laughs> You can see we, uh, at least I did, I did prepare very well. I've, I've been growing this beard specifically to talk about Vikings. Uh, now I could try to, to make a little knot in here and then maybe put a I can have a French braid in that beard or later some, on. Something like that. Or, or a rainbow, rainbow clip or something the Vikings probably had. I'm having I, wonderful ideas. I, I my hair clips will be shared with that beard I, later on. It might not be pretty, and it's definitely going to be private. <laughs> Now share. I, okay. Let's talk about A Feast for Odin. <laughs> so, um, first of all, don't run away if this looks really complicated, because, uh, I mean, it's an Uwe Rosenberg spiel and... Uh, game. Game. As... as <laughs> As the Brits say. They, they also know Spiel. I know! Um, <laughs> it's a game by, by Uwe Rosenberg, and he really likes a couple of things. One being tons of, well, components, then um, doing upgrading stuff with a billion of uh, different actions, and um, yeah, Can't and stop. always being in a state of mind where I 
don't really know what to do next because there's so much that I could do next. And then you come back because you think afterwards, like three days later, it's like, I think I should have done the other thing. <laughs> and then, then you come back and want to play again. So um, to walk you through this, uh, we are playing as Vikings. And uh, as all the Vikings do, we want to quest for victory points. Um, or in this case, actually, I think it is money, uh, which then substitutes for victory points. But um, It's we, just a synonym for victory points. We'll get to that. Um, as with, again, also uh, most of uh, Uwe Rosenberg's Spiele games... Yeah, Lots of German you. lessons of the day today. Um, you will, uh, you'll probably be best off learning this by just starting to play and going through the manual uh, phase for phase. Because uh, this game has uh, 12 phases. Choose a camera. I'm not going to flip back and forth. Now you do. No, I don't. Uh, I'm going to focus on that camera, have your silly face on it, and be quite... Giggly when editing. I hope you folks are too. We're gonna switch now to the overhead camera. Yeah, we, this is how you do we're it. We're playing for twelve uh, through twelve phases, and that sounds like a lot, but there's some minor stuff in, in there as well. And then uh, we'll do that for a total of seven rounds, uh, which is indicated by the little guys that are already on our board. Uh, to start out with, um, I want to give you an overview. Um, we have some starting resources. Um, in fact, we start with a mead, which is uh, this little red, red guy. And I not can all, I, I'll, I'll stack my stuff. Uh, not um, to food. Let me see. Maybe maybe I can stack it there so you have a chance to see it. Um, there's um, where to start best. Well, at the beginning. Once upon a time. There's different types of resources needed for different things. So uh, the three main resources you will notice uh, when unpacking this game is wood, stone, and ore, which you can already find on these two strips here. Uh, there's a whole bunch more uh, at the side of the table for all of those. As I said, he likes components. Uh, I had a, had a slight anxiety a millisecond there because I thought you would... Spill. Yeah, you were um, kind of rushing. Uh, the, wow. These are like crafting components. Then there's money, which is uh, indicated by little coins, and there's different uh, amounts of them. So there's one coin, two coin, four. Oh, coins, not so, not so fast. And, one uh, coin, two coin, and ten coins. Four coin, ten coin, and they're the, at my side of the table. So we said money is gonna be victory points. I'm winning. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, then you have these weapon cards and you start out with a couple of them they uh, have different weapons or different stuff on them in this case a spear, a bow and a trap uh, card uh, these are actually not secret uh, so you can keep them here they are essentially resources you'll need them or you, you will spend them while going hunting uh, to increase your chances at being successful while hunting. And uh, they some can be used for hunting, some can be used for conquest and um, well, stealing stuff from, from people. Um, so this, I think, is the first line of resources. And I mention that because, uh, with uh, uh, two small exceptions, these are resources you will be trying to get and then spend to get the stuff that you actually want to get. Um, now, you see these two trays on this side. These are also resources, but they have uh, some uh, other special um, meaning to them. So uh, some of them already have victory points printed on them, like the, the cow or the sheep. And uh, that is one way to gain victory points uh, until uh, the end of the game. However, um, you, during the game at any time, uh, you can spend or use uh, these tiles and um, actually let me be fair here you can only use the green and the blue tiles on your board to cover uh, some of this area up and that becomes a neat little tetris like game where you start on putting putting stuff on here and oh no, that's the red one and uh, then you can put the the green one there and uh, you want to do that 
um, because there's uh, some money printed on here and uh, the more you've got covered up the more money you will be getting each turn um, so you want to kind of uh, build this out and, and cover stuff up and uh, in order to be able to actually cover the, the money here you need to have all the um, the spaces below it and to the left covered up so uh, actually this uh, this four space roll can cover up the zero and the one and would immediately get me to two money per turn but i couldn't use this to cover up the two coin there because i have still open spaces here there's some other stuff on here uh, there's um uh, so-called uh, like um, in German it's premium I'm not sure if it's bonus, bonus if it's bonus in, in English um, but what you want to do here is you don't want to actually cover up them but you want to frame them in uh, in pieces and if all the sides have been framed uh, around it um, you will get this for free uh, whenever uh, it's uh, your turn for earning your bonus. So that is one thing where uh, these tiles come uh, come into play. You'll also know that uh, they are in their basic shape, uh, different uh, well iterations. There's a two uh, spot piece, three, four, uh, or three and four in in length. Then there's four as a, a square. And then here you have uh, similar versions. And usually in this uh, arrangement, it's that in this row, is that row? Mm -hmm. Column? Row? I always get confused. In, in this row, the... In our direction, this is a column and this is a row. Yeah, in, in this Excel row... Excel spreadsheet. In this row, there's uh, the, the two space parts. These are the three space parts and so on. And this also helps you to kind of get an idea how upgrading later works. So uh, let's say you have a fish um, or let's say you, you start off with this um, violets. I... Flax. I don't um, know the English word. Uh, flax, maybe. It could be whatever. Flaxseed is linesam, so I wouldn't say, I don't know, it's somewhere on the screen, so, because so, we learned to. So you, you can you can upgrade that to, to the red side, you can upgrade the red side to the green side, and you can upgrade the green side to the blue side, and that's how you get to the kind of more valuable items that you want to have uh, placing them on here. Then talking about placing them on here, that actually has some additional rules which are probably not uh, readable for you at all, but there's a reminder on the boards of uh, what you can do. So for example, green tiles can never go straight next to each other. So uh, what I uh, forgot to mention, you can actually put them anywhere here on the board as long as you don't uh, cover these money things uh, uh, in an uh, illegal way. But this is allowed. Uh, so green can touch on the corners. This is not allowed. Um, things that can go next to each other are the blue tiles, which makes them much more valuable. So um, actually, I could have flipped those over, but uh, anyhow. So this would be uh, an arrangement that is that is allowed. The two blues connecting to each other and the greens are not connecting to each other. Uh, other stuff you can place on the board is money. And money also is not restricted. You can essentially use the coins to fill up little gaps that you may have on, on the board. Um, and the same goes for ore. And that is why money and ore, when I said that, are have a minor special function here in that you can place uh, the ore directly on, on this board uh, instead of spending it for well doing doing stuff with it um as i said this is a Uwe rosenberg spiel and now you pronounced his name in english i'm so proud of you uh, this is going all over board, but there's a lot going on here so th these resources getting or these resources, getting you in these resources, upgrading them, then filling the board and trying to cover stuff. And uh, there's spaces here that give you negative victory points. So effectively, they by covering them, you earn victory points, uh, if that makes sense. You get less minus victory points. Um, and uh, then there's some other stuff you can do. Um, <laughs> Very little other stuff. So, the, but this is <laughs> sorry. This is the main kind of the main thing you'll be focusing in in the game, and to to get there, you can use different 
approaches on different paths. You can never leave your home area, so so to speak, and just go hunting for uh, for meat and uh, using uh, your uh, hunting gear that you have uh, in, in your cards to, to fill up those spaces with uh, stuff. Or you can start building ships and there's three different types of, of ships that you that you can get they go onto your board like so there's uh, the that's the whale hunting ship then we have a trade ship and this is uh, effectively like a, a, a conquest ship um, that uh, have different use uh, depending on what actions you you want to do but usually these three unlock different actions on this giant board uh, available to you uh, which we'll probably get into once once we talk about the, the actions in here and uh, once we actually play notice i i haven't even started talking about the actions that you can do this is just to give you an overall feel of what's what's going on um if this board is not enough for you to fill up with uh, little uh, tetris like shapes uh, you can purchase or get uh, a bigger boards uh, like these islands can be discovered that then if you Take them, get added to your board, and give you another space to to fill with more bonus items available and more uh, money you might earn. Some of them don't have uh, money or not a lot of money. Some have a lot of money, like uh, Greenland here uh, has um, two tracts of money actually, which uh, is quite interesting. Um, but some some of them have, for example, these bonus items that are in the corner, which makes them really easy to obtain by uh, just, well, cornering them. Oh. Um, then there's uh, these weird uh, shapes here, which are treasures, and treasures can either be forged, um, or like these here can be forged, and um, all of them can be uh, gotten by conquest. Some can be bought if you have trade ships. So there's different paths to gain or to get you the, the same amount of stuff. And if these are not enough for you either, you can also start building houses and then these get added to your to your track, which also give you a, a possibility to fill them up. Um, difference here is, uh, or uh, same with the islands, uh, these give you an um, amount of victory points straight away. And uh, so just building this would give me a net amount of victory points of two because uh, there's, this is worth 17 points and has 15 minus one markers on here. So by filling this up, I get up to 17 points and similar to the um, the islands. Then there's uh, stuff like this where you also build a small hut, but these have, doesn't isn't these are not filled up by um, our little shapes. These are filled up by just placing wood and stone on here um, and are a little bit easier to, to uh, obtain. I think we'll just go through the phases now. Mm -hmm. I just want you to have a, a rough understanding of what's where and what are you doing with that. Uh, the board in the center are effectively our actions. Um, and just to give go through this and uh, tell you at least what the different categories are before we, we start. And then we can play 12 phases and I think that's yes. a good yes. overview, right? Um, so... Um, First of all, you'll notice that uh, these are all uh, set up in um, in categories. Um, you have uh, the first row here is all about building these houses. The second one uh, is all about getting ships. So you get a whale hunter ship for spending one wood if you use this action. Two wood gets, gets you a trade ship here. Two woods gets you a, a combat ship here. And this is actually a combined space uh, where you can spend two stones and two wood and then can decide what you want to have. The may, uh, the difference between the further right you go uh, is how many workers you actually have to spend. So all actions along this column are uh, or require one worker to be placed. So we have these little guys here. So if I want to use that, I would just place it here. And as long as or as soon as there is a worker on here, no other player can use that space for this uh, for this round. Uh, if I want to use the other space next to it, I have to place two workers on here and so on. Uh, in fact, placing three or four workers also gives you a little extra bonus by having you draw cards 
which I haven't talked about yet. But in addition to these combat uh, uh, weapon cards, there's also cards that give you special abilities. And in fact, you start out with, with one. And these usually have either a one-shot or an ongoing advantage they give you. They are usually also worth a couple of victory points if you manage to, to get them. So going on, or whenever you place three workers, you get to draw one card for free. And if you place four workers, you get to play one card for free. Um, but let's go further here. There's hunting. So this is all stuff uh, which I have to explain later on, which involves rolling dice and uh, trying to, in fact, in this case, roll low uh, and then spending either wood or the weapon that is depicted on here to be successful. That's why you want to uh, keep your weapons or uh, get more weapons to have more success on here. But then some like this whale or uh, going on a whale hunt actually requires here this specific type of ship, uh, which uh, then uh, also increases your odds at uh, getting getting the hunt successful. Obviously, the spoils are much higher if you're hunting a whale than if you're hunting uh, whatever beaver that is here. Um, it's a frettchen. <laughs> and you can already see how here it depicts what kind of tiles you get. So this uh, gives, gives you a green three space tile and a red um, six space tile. And we haven't talked about feeding yet, but um, this is uh, usually where you get your food items and pelt. Then you have the market uh, here and or at least the, uh, the, the cow market or animal market where you can uh, buy cows or sheep um for money which is pretty straightforward just go there pay money and then get whatever you want so the notation here is you if this uh thing is here that means you pay one and then you get two of these uh then there's the uh, the week uh the regular weekend market or midweek market whatever you want to call it you don't have to spend money here but farmers you, market yes uh, and you get also different food items uh but in this case uh, orange ones uh, then you have production, and that is uh, if you already own a couple of cows or sheep, these produce uh, the the amount of resources for you, uh, which can also be quite interesting and profitable. So if you played Caverna or uh, um, Agricola, uh, you might be uh, familiar with the concept, uh, specifically with uh, we are with Caverna. Um, so this is similar to that. Uh, these beasties will uh, actually uh, replicate if you have two or more and uh, go, well, they just uh, will birth themselves on their own. You just need to buy the first two uh, and then you can use them to produce stuff and uh, get some things um, quite on the cheap, so to speak. Um, then we have crafting and crafting is uh, a little bit about uh, well, essentially trading stuff in. So here you can trade a stone for, for money and a rune. Runes are these little blue two tiles here. Um, then uh, you can do the same with a treasure chest, more treasure chests, uh, but you can also use that to upgrade stuff. So if, if that should be flexed, you can then make linen out of mm -hmm. it. And um, then if you have linen, you can make a coat out of it and probably even get some money for it uh, because the beaver was worth some money. If you spend ore here, you can actually craft one of these weird shapes that cover quite a lot of space or might be of the right well shape to uh, maybe cover something here that could be interesting or uh, even go all out here and uh, make a ton of other stuff. Um, Going further down, then uh, we have uh, like the base resource gathering, which is called uh, mountains and trade. Um, you will notice these two strips here. Um, there will be for each round a new strip entering uh, a play, uh, but these are the resources kind of available to us uh, this time. So if you go on here, you can take two resources from one strip and you always start from the left. So if I go here, I would get two wood if Sarah goes there. Uh, afterwards uh, saying let's pick up this she would get then two wood and one stone or she could get two wood and one stone uh, she, From the other she gets to decide which strip you want to uh, mine but there's also some like this space that allows you to take three from one strip and two from the other or something 
Um, then these tiles here are upgrade tiles, meaning you can upgrade one of your, the tiles in your pro, uh, possession into the next color. So if I would go here, I could take one wood, for example, and then upgrade my mead into the next higher value thing, which would be the green two tile. So it's a barrel, a little barrel of oil with way more mead. If you go into this space, you can upgrade two tiles. You cannot, unfortunately, upgrade the same tile twice, uh, at least not here. You can do that here. That's what these two arrows are for. Uh, this means you get to draw um, a combat card. So these are essentially your really, how do you get some base materials or how do you get to upgrade some uh, of, your, of your stuff? And everything down here is about going uh, out with your ships. So these all require different ships. So this is the trading with ships. This is doing combat with ships. And again, Plundering. again, um, I uh, I'll have to uh, explain how how die rolling works. Uh, these are also interesting because you can upgrade your uh, your stuff here if it's green and if they are not the same. So let's say you have four or five different green tiles, you can all flip them to the blue side um, by using that space as long as I said uh, as they are not the same. Um, or you can use this one to buy things from here. So that's the other way. So you can either forge them by spending ore, or you can spend money and buy stuff from there if you have a blue ship. Um, the three down here uh, allow you essentially to discover these islands. So you have to use these and have uh, the appropriate ship to pick one of these islands. If you get them, you just keep them and they are now for you to place stuff on there. And uh, everything down here is about, uh, well, getting more of these uh, cards that give you advantages and playing them, playing more than one, and also sending your ships um, onto, uh, well, onto greater things. So uh, if you take a look at uh, a ship like uh, this uh, combat ship is worth eight, eight victory points at the end of the game. But if you send it out, you will flip it over and now it is worth 21. It goes overseas. Yes, it you goes send overseas. It overseas. So if you if you buy it, it goes onto your onto your tableau like so, and then you can use all these actions that require you in that. But if you send it overseas, you flip it over and then it actually covers up one of the spaces up here, which brings us immediately to you have to feed your people um so this is another space where you can uh, put your little tetris shapes and uh, during each round we will get to that later on you have to effectively feast uh, or have to uh, keep your people alive by feeding them stuff so the only things you can place on here are food items or better said red and uh, orange items um and money because if all fails, people will start eating salmon. <laughs> um, however, this also has some, some weird placement rules. Uh, that, uh, for example, you cannot place the same uh, color tile next to each other. Um, so you can put a red here, but then you have to put an orange there or put a coin in between and then an orange there. Um, the other weird rule is if you have two of the same tiles, let's say I have two red meat and a coin, place the first one like so and the second so uh, if I have an, another one that's already on the board I have to place every other one this way so pointing up and obviously this doesn't have a huge impact if you have something like uh, this uh, squared thing because uh, surprise if you turn it nothing happens with, uh, with the orientation really uh, but that uh, kind of is really painful let's say if you have two of these meat pieces uh, and the first one covers a lot and then you place the second one and then you have to place it like so so um people want to have nutritious food and variation yes. they don't want to eat in, the same crap yeah. all day long in fact this is all in uh, uh, indeed about uh, having uh, not eating the same stuff all the time uh, people will get annoyed by, by mm -hmm. that so that accounts for red stuff and for orange stuff uh, and i am looking that i have everything in frame mm -hmm. um, i have the elk of starting uh, which the start moves <laughs> Uh, which uh, goes uh, at the end of each round to the player who was the last to place uh, his guy. So that is another thing you might want to ponder, uh, using only one guy actions all the time to keep uh, having having the choice there. Um, 
But anyhow, I will now go through the 12 phases and I, you probably won't be able to see this yeah, anymore. Hardly, maybe, no. maybe if I put it over here. There's a, no. little, there's a little wooden cube on here. So uh, phase one is uh, we get a new Viking, meaning we take the leftmost Viking from our board here and add him to our uh, tomb. tomb. There was a... Yeah, a, let's say the the place with the tree the party it's, party market it's party not, place it's not a thong i, I know no. as much oh tingstrafen war das ting? uh, was the german so ting like thing hmm. like fetter it so uh, we place one one guy here uh, and then we have we get a harvest going now um, there's a little reminder on this board um, so we are in phase one, and that means in the harvest phase we get all goods that have a one printed on them, uh, meaning we get these three orange goods here, which I will then place aside, um, because I don't want to uh, have them on my board all the time, but you will have a lot of these uh, little resources there. Um, then we go to this third step, which would uh, mean we get to turn over one of these uh, plans. Now, uh, again, this is a reminder here that no plan is flipped, uh, but starting with the third round, we will uh, start flipping plan number two. And uh, you, you will find out that this first side is only worth six victory points, the second side is worth 12 victory points, and they differ a little bit in what they earn you uh, and generate for you. So the they get more valuable the more later on you can wait if you don't have some other player who swoops in and uh, steals it uh, from right from under your nose when you want to pick it up. Now uh, on phase four we get a free weapon. Sarah gets a bow and I'm getting a sword, which is uh, pretty sweet if I want to go on a uh, on a raid. Um, actually, let me check what the starting card of mine is. Um, um if i uh, if i place anyone on uh, someone on this um handwerk uh, crafting crafting category here i get a free resource that i can choose so this is a pretty sweet card and i should try to get it out early because whenever i go here i can benefit from that which uh, might be a good idea but now we go into the actions um and uh, my my little moosey guy is uh, telling me that I'm the first one to do something. And I think... What do I want to do? What to do? What to do? Um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. hmm. <laughs> this is why a game takes and this hours. Is, and this is this is uh, I, I'm trying to give you the best impression of how a game like this works out for for you. No, now, for you because you take your so, time. So uh, we we have enough food uh, for the first round to actually get through of, of eating stuff. Uh, by the way, if you don't have enough, then you get uh, to take a, a minus victory point as a penalty, which is quite unfortunate. I think I'm going to play it safe and just start out by taking two pieces of wood into my thing here. And then it's Sarah's turn to place a little Viking. Um, I'm going to go here with three dudas, which means I can... Can you... I'm having a short arm. I get a card. Which card? Um, oh, that's... Uh, yeah. So again, these are typically secret. Uh, I don't know if you want to. Yeah, show if you have. don't look. What you have? This to is what, what I do. have. No, it's uh, quite self-explanatory. Um, I just have to. There it is. So some. some I got that. Some of the cards have an ongoing uh, bonus or, or advantage, and others have like a one-shot action. Uh, they're usually color coded, so yellow cards are um, one-shot actions. So when I get to take resources from the two mountains, with one I get uh, three resources and the other two, and this is what I've chosen. Mm -hmm. 
And I think I'm going to go hunting. Not that I have a good chance of going hunting, but uh, I want to explain to you guys how hunting works or how the dice interaction works. Now, if you want to do something else, I wanted to go hunting as well. If you no, it's fine. Uh, I, just don't choose it just because of you want to no, no, say it's, it. It's fine. Okay. Good. So, um, so this hunt uh, requires me to roll the the orange die. Uh, the weapon of choice here is the bow, and I can use wood as well instead of uh, spending these weapons. So the way that works is you get to roll three times, and um, hunting uh, you want to roll low because the amount of uh, uh, that you roll is the amount of weapons or, or wood you have to spend to be successful. So let's see. My first roll is a. Two. That's pretty sweet. I don't want to risk uh, getting uh, getting a one and then uh, ending up with an eight. So uh, I have a bow and I will spend the bow. Oh, I just have our discard pile over there. And uh, I'll spend a wood to, do, uh, to uh, get a beaver skin and, and uh, some meat. Kind of meat? Oh, that one. Like this meat. Oh, okay. Um, and I could use now the, the beaver skin because it's green already to cover up this space. So uh, I some some things I didn't explain. There are some actions you can do all the time. Like uh, you can always place stuff on your board, which is usually important if you get to the point where you have to score the money uh, there. Um, I'll just keep uh, my stuff at, uh, aside for now because there's no reason for me right now to put it on here. But... Just so you know, you can place the tiles on your boards whenever you want to. Other things you can always do uh, is buying ships uh, for uh, the amount of victory points. So uh, effectively, you could trade five coins for the trade ship, uh, which is also worth five, five points at the end of the game. But um, I want to. You want to entrap. You want to put a trap. The big beaver. Down. So yeah. uh, trap works the same, except that uh, Sarah has to uh, pay with trap cards, or she can use trap cards to reduce uh, her, her rolled amount. Also, if she's not successful, and I haven't actually explained what not, su not successful means, if you're not successful, uh, you don't have to spend any wood, uh, and uh, actually you never really have to spend any wood if you have enough weapons, um, but there's you don't have to spend your cards or wood if you're not, not successful, and you get one of uh, the uh, weapon resources. So in this case, if Sarah would fail, she would get a free trap um, back, as well as one of the guys she uh, mm -hmm. used up there if she fails. That's a seven. That's, <laughs> That's a bit high. Oh, sorry, I didn't That's want to kick five. anymore. That could still be a little bit unfortunate. Uh, you were here, right? Yes. But... Hmm. Oh, come on. Oh, yay. And a four. Yeah. So that would so be one trap. One trap. And three wood. Three trees. She gets a trap back. So uh, I'm going to get the trappy beppy. Traps are reusable. And I'm getting the old beaver skin. No, it's actually... It's a wolf. It's not a beaver. It's a wolf. <laughs> and the other one was a Frettchen. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to cover up things. Unfortunately, my uh, your board is not, is not in frame, but so, I pretty much covered up these. Yeah, so uh, four. So, or you can choose if you want to keep the, the bonus stuff here and try to work around it to earn it, or you can just build over it. Just keep in mind there are some spaces that you're not allowed to build over, um, and uh, those are usually Mountains, yeah, uh, or indicated the... by uh, strong black lines. Yeah, the columns uh, in the house. You can see that here. Uh, these have uh, thicker black lines. So uh, that's the only space you, uh, spaces you're not allowed to go over. Uh, I will go here and draw one of these cards and get a free coin. And uh, I'm going to get myself... No, I'm not going to get myself... Because I just thought I'm here. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna pay a stone for a coin and a rune. Okay. And I'm gonna place it underneath the two coin thing. Okay. Because I'm totally awesome. 
Uh, now Sarah is already out of Vikings. I still have three left, so I will keep the 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 moves of beginning or ilk of beginning. But I still have some turns, so I want to uh, use this action here. Uh, spend this to play two cards. Uh, one is um, my starting card, so now I get uh, whatever uh, I get a. a uh, resources uh, resource from there whenever I use the the crafting card, and the other one is um, the um, barbarian, which oh. whenever um, our whenever we have to pay with food for our guys to keep them uh, feasted, so so to speak, fed, fed up, um, not I, FedEx. And this is this is quite useful because I was lucky enough to get one of these during hunting. If I have one or if I have any of these on the uh, on this thing, I get three combat cards and a coin. So that is he, really, there's a really powerful, card. really useful card. So now that I have my crafting uh, guy uh, with me, I could use a crafting space. So in this case, I can go here and transform this uh, of flax into the linen into Ooh. a piece of linen. And you also get a resource. And I get a, uh, I get to take a resource, yes. Ore or stone? Hmm. What's it gonna be? I, I always have the feeling that ore is super valuable, so I, I pick pick a piece of ore here. Now uh, I'm done. Sarah is done. Which totally done. Brings us to the uh, de uh, determine the next starting player, which is still me. I was the last to to play one guy. Now uh, the next step would be getting getting money, and I want to use my. Um, my little thing, thingamajig here. Hmm. 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 And that is why this game takes two hours to I'm, play. I'm spending. I'm spending a coin on. Uh, oh no! Then, then I cannot do that. I'm, I'm placing that here. I don't want to uh, cover up my meat um, yet, quite yet. That's why, why I was thinking about it. So how much money you get? I'm getting two coins. Great. So you get whatever is the highest that that is still visible on the thing combined. The uh, uh, yes, the, the, the thing that is still visible on this plus whatever other spaces here you have here. Uh, then, uh, if any of us would have animals, they would multiply. Uh, that works in the following way. Uh, you need at least two. Uh, so if I had two cows, I would just flip over one of the two cows. So now she is with uh, a new cow, a tiny cow. Veal. A wheel? Veal. That's at, at least the meat that you okay, eat so she's, the Okay, so this cow. cow is with a fifth wheel on the wagon. Um, interestingly enough, uh, if it's in this state, it is worth an additional victory point. Because yeah, of there's course, a, there's another one in there. There's an, it's another a double cow. Uh, so uh, the, what I was about to say, if you have two or more uh, and uh, don't have uh, one that is with child, uh, you flip one over. To be that space and you're done the next time that happens and you already have one like this you flip it back to the regular state and then take an additional one so effectively you will be getting a new animal every second round uh, and they will start slowly multiplying but you only get one uh, so even if you had four cows you will still just get one to flip over and not uh, two for whatever reason i think uh, this would be way too uh, much points that you can yeah. uh, then multiply yeah. by, mm -hmm. by that um, being the reason less being nature uh, but we don't have any animals uh, so now we have to keep our guys fed so as i said we have to put stuff on here i will now use my my uh, that meat thing i i just got uh, which uh, is uh, super useful and uh, then i can spill the beans here and uh, I'll exchange my two points for two points of one because I don't want to waste too many things and put my last coin here to cover that up. Uh, now it also might make sense to you why it is pretty good uh, to send ships uh, over to uh, discover other worlds by flipping them over because if you do so you actually have less vikings to feed you don't lose workers through that which is pretty 
good, um, but you still have less uh, to take care of, so to speak. Um, once we have done that, uh, these get discarded. Um, I must not forget that I'm getting my uh, little bonus. So uh, since I used uh, the, the meat, I get three free combat cards and a coin. So these, these barbarians kind of pay for themselves. My three combat cards are two bows, three bows. So uh, guess who's going to go hunting next time. Um, after that is done, and as I said, if you don't uh, uh, manage to feed everybody, you get minus points by in terms of uh, ting, ting curses. curses, whatever. penalties. And now, now we would be getting... Uh, our bonus. So for that we would check if we have any uh, of these little um, resource icons entirely um, surrounded by um, our tetra shapes. I don't think I any, don't have any. Both of us don't so we can just skip that. Then a new mountain tile enters the play and for that we just draw these are shuffled. The next one um, and for the existing ones, you take off the leftmost piece. In this case, because I'm lazy, I will just place it up here. And uh, then we get a little bit of wood here. Another word for lazy is efficient mm -hmm. in this case. So if anybody ever talks to you about German efficiency, what they actually this is, mean is German laziness. laziness. Yeah. Um, exactly. So... Uh, and uh, now we take back our, as the last phase action, we take back our Vikings and they go back into the, the party hut. And uh, then the entire thing starts again. Oh, by I have to put away my resources. By going to, to phase one, again, a new Viking is born, which uh, starts round two. Here we would be getting more food uh, in, uh, in the uh, harvest phase. We would actually getting foods uh, indicated with one and two. Um, still no island is flipped. In the third phase, things are getting a little bit more complicated because there's no uh, no harvest, so you have to get your food otherwise or at least ration the food you already have and the first island flips. And so the game progresses until the end of the game where you just count out how many points you have. And it is surprisingly easy. Um, there are uh, very few tiles that are v worth victory points, like this crown is worth two points, the cow and the sheep are worth points. Um, and the islands and the houses. And uh, the, the islands and the houses uh, all work at, with the concept of they are worth points, but you have to cover up the negative points. Uh, and while we have started here, as I said, if you uh, if you have some stuff you can just put it down here which uh, in the end of the game will probably happen that you are more interested in covering up negative points uh, here instead of uh, trying to advance your uh, coin gainage um, however since you can spend uh, put coins on here um, it doesn't really matter in the last turn you don't have to because um, the scoring booklet just asks you how much money do you have and then just uh, how much minus points do you have here and then either you cover them up and count them or you just count them and count the coins and you're done with that either way um uh, one thing I w still have to explain, or I forgot to explain, is if you send your ships uh, off to the far away lands, you actually have to give them some money, and that is dependent on which phase you are. So if I would be sending away a ship in phase two, that just costs me two coins, which is pretty cheap for considering that that's 21 victory points at, at the end of the game. Um, but the further along we get, the more expensive they are, uh, so the the kind of uh, value you get out of that. Uh, it's still worth it, but it's less than you might think it is in, in the first couple of turns. And I'm sorry for just rushing through this, um, but I think you got a good idea of how this works. It, as I said, once you're it's one of those games. Once you're in the flow, once you have one round done and have gone through the motions of the phases, it is way less uh, intimidating and complicated. The only thing that stays mind-bending, boggling, is this action space and then trying to figure out what you want to do. But uh, let me assure you, that is a, a, a theme that this game keeps on uh, over multiple plays. So uh, don't be uh, discouraged from giving, giving this a try. Um, you will probably, as I said, come 
a day later or maybe even a couple of hours later and say, I think what I'm not sure if I did the right thing, but I think next time I want to try this or I want to go there. I want to. But that means you want to put it on the table again. Yes. Uh, can you say age and if, uh, player number and if, if day I, time and if all I of that? Find it on this box, and, uh, and if you've seen it from the intro, this is another one of those games. Uh, yeah, you can build a house with it. Where this is the the founding stone for the house you want to build. That's the um, second stone after cover. I'm I'm sure it's one to four players because you can play this solo. Um, and there's some some minor rule changes for for that. Um, it is one to four uh, ages twelve and up, um, and uh, I think Vikings is a pretty dope theme for uh, kids, uh, so they might be getting into that. And it says thirty minutes per person, and that is a blatant lie, which <laughs> is usually for these games. Um, I I would say, well, maybe maybe we are just we had slow, an out no. But, we had an hour on multiple games, an hour per person, because without one person, without, two person. Without, oh yeah, okay. So without I, setting up and anything, just playing. Two I would, hours. I would say, I count a good twenty minutes for setting up, fifteen maybe if you're really, really quick, and then uh, thirty to forty-five minutes per player. It's it's getting a little bit less uh, 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 dragging if you. I think if you're with more uh, players, but this is a game where someone will stare at this board and uh, given that uh, another player can take away whatever you had pre-planned in your mind just before it is your turn and then just you have don't to pre -plan. Yeah. then you have to compensate yeah. um shall we name this likes and dislikes and you keep going with your sentence i no say go I'm, I'm not, I don't always I'm not, have to be I, first. No, I don't want to want to put this as a likes or dislikes. Uh, but uh, this is just so you are aware. This is a game that um, is mind numbing, and um, if you have a hard time making a decision quick, um, this can take quite long. Um, also, the the fiddly bits of setting setting this up. Uh, by the way, uh, and this sounds like a, a dislike, but it's actually a like, uh, because um, before you do the first game, uh, you get to set these uh, sorting trays, which come with the game, which I think is a huge plus, um, which makes uh, just not only it easier for keeping them assembled and uh, sorted, but also giving you a good indicator of the progression of the tiles so seeing like uh, if you upgrade the the cow the next thing is uh, the the coat and if you upgrade the coat the next thing is uh, the whatever treasure treasure yeah so the treasure is on here yeah um i you you could you could put it against this game uh, saying that this has a, a tiny smidge of luck in, involved uh, compared to other uh, Uwe Rosenberg uh, games. Uh, uh, Caverna doesn't use dice, uh, so what are these dice doing here in, in our game? And uh, Actually, we haven't told you about the, the, the combat stuff. The combat stuff works very similar to the hunting stuff with the point being that it's a little bit opposite. You have to roll high and every good that you can plunder has uh, a number attached to it. So, uh, for example, the shield here has, uh, I think this uh, camera here, this has a 13 on it. So you have to roll a 13 on a 12-sided die. Now you're going to say, oh, how, how do you do that? Well, you can here spend your swords to increase your die result. Uh, you can also... Um, equip or outfit your ships with uh, with ores that kind of is uh, is a permanent bonus to to your ship by uh, giving them better equipment so to speak which also will uh, uh, increase your your die roll there uh, as i said this uh, is a game that has multiple paths to to victory and uh I think this is a big plus in my book. This not only has multiple paths to victory, but this has multiple paths to victory and multiple paths to walking those paths, if that makes sense. So you can try to win by uh, being really good and uh, covering your stuff up here and getting all the, the bonus items by having these weird shapes uh, that helps a tremendous amount. But there's different ways to get there. You could go with the combat chips there. You could go with the trade chips there. And for the combat chips, you want to have these little swords too and, and really good luck rolling. 
but you could, uh, if you go the money route, you just want to get a lot of money and then just be able to buy the the things uh, that are on on that tray. Or maybe you try really hard to get some ore and um, go forging. Although forging is still a little bit expensive because you have to spend three workers uh, pounding on the the molten metal to make it a crown. Well, actually not a crown, but uh, to make it an axe or some, something like that. And I really like that. It's as confusing or uh, irritating it is uh, the first couple of games. Um, I think it's something that still keeps you coming back and trying new strategies. I'm I purposefully don't even want to look up uh, how to efficiently play this game because I like the uh, exploring the different systems and how how they uh, interact, how you can upgrade stuff. You can go straight away and plunder blue items, or you could try to build up an engine that produces little red items that then get upgraded into green items and then upgraded into blue items. And both are perfectly valid and uh, I think are also something that uh, while as i said these look like a million actions you can take but they, since there's different paths to different paths to victory um even if someone is taking your space there is something else you could do um, and um, it's usually not as punishing where it says yes you could do that but you need to have that entire infrastructure in place to have that being useful. There are some tiles in here that do that, notably when you have the, the animals or it's something that requires a specific kind of ship. Um, but uh, yeah, if it's, it's a really good way in this game, for example, to progress by uh, getting one of these islands early on and then using the uh, the little bonus uh, things that are on here to, to get you some spoils from your discoveries. And uh, unlike the ones on your board, these are not base resources. Yes, you might be getting a fish here, but if you look here, you get whale meat or you get a sheep here or you get milk. So uh, if you have one of those, you don't really have to care about food items anymore because usually they produce food items and then you can decide do you want to send your ships away and uh, yeah i think that's a no, plus I'm, that i'm still in my this is what you can do and this is exactly why i like uh this one better than caverna uh having uh, I'm very heavily comparing the two because they do come with pretty much the same size box. They're from the same designer and they are both games where you, well, need to buy a second table. They are large games uh, and they always take a little longer to play and you're um, kind of overwhelmed maybe with all the actions you could do, but... Uh, I like this a little better because it, um, like you said, you don't want to even look up how to efficiently play this. Because what I felt was the best thing about this game, just to have something fresh every time you play it, is go with the strategy that comes with your first card that you get. So sometimes you get uh, bonuses on plundering, sometimes you get bonuses on uh, hunting or you are a crafter like uh, Daniel this time around and just go a crafting barbarian yeah nonetheless. <laughs> that's that's a cool thing you cannot be only one thing mm -hmm. um, but go down that route to well get your victory points go with the first card instead of always going with the ship and always go or always going with the cows or whatever it is that you um felt was nice in the first game and uh this game comes with um three different stacks of cards for a b c this is a the easiest starting card and then there's two whole stacks of cards in there that uh, are for later games when you're quite familiar with mm -hmm. how the actions work. So there's so much in there that you don't, um, or at least I don't uh, feel like I have to find out the perfect strategy and then push for it every time and uh, have my elbows in there and 
make sure that I'm first player so that I can go on the spots that definitely make me win. This is not what I come to the table for when I want to play those games or specifically this game. And um, uh, another huge bonus, I totally agree with pretty much everything you said. A uh, very, very big bonus um, was the trays. trays. I really like that. And another thing I have to say is also the the coin idea um i like the the, the way it's a uh, shape of course to well cover up stuff but it's also it's not just a big coin like you get uh, well, with well, other games because it is it a has, shape and a coin yeah, it, is it has the, the function and I, yeah and i like that um things have a double purpose in those uh, in this game here like um Uh, of course, there's the shapes that uh, you can upgrade and put uh, on your tiles, but also the um, the uh, things to plunder and forge, like the crown, for example. There's victory points on there. Um, I do like that idea, um, and I do. I don't remember a lot of games where this is actually happening, where. Um, A component has a double a double meaning or a double thing going on. It's very nicely done here, mm -hmm. and aside from perfect quality of uh, the components, the artwork is cutesy. Um, it's nothing super fancy, but it is what I would expect from a Euro style kind of uh, board game of that size. And one thing also that uh, makes me like this game a little better than Caverna is um, the tile laying Tetris style. Mm -hmm. I mean, in Caverna you have those uh, plates and you, have, and you have a tile laying, yeah. but I, not so much to, with the shapes. I have to uh, German phrase incoming Brechelanze of... <laughs> Which is break a spear, break a lance. No, but uh, th there has to be uh, something for 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 Caverna. I very much like the smaller scale of Caverna. This idea of building up your own little cave and farmstead and yeah, um, it, it's very cute and it's and very it has lovely. Dogs. Yeah, and uh, well, I mean, you could say this is a plus for feast for Odin because I I won't be able to irritate. Uh, Uh, other people again uh, in in some way. Yeah, but well, I do like the the puzzle style Tetris yeah. kind of. Like, I mean, I do like jigsaw puzzles. So hey, of course, I will like this aspect of the game maybe a bit more than I do with Caverna. Nothing against Caverna; it's a very cutesy game. But here's another thing where I personally felt that uh, I was not as How did you say it? Uh, hindered by you? You 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 were not pissing people off. Uh, you just said it. You were. Well, the thing is, he in the caverna you don't have as many spaces that do the same thing well, available yeah. from the get go. Yes, you it's, get it's more and developing. That's, yeah. yeah. And that here you have all the actions available from the first go. So even if you feel uh, if you uh, play with a full set of players, um, you will of course be blocked here and there. But there's something similar probably available. Not so much with also, Caverna, and it uh, stifled yeah. my gameplay quite a bit. Also, with at four, least when I play with him. With four players, you also get additional use the action that someone else has used before. So yeah. I. I th think this game feels less punishing yeah. than other yeah. other action yeah. selection exactly. or worker placement exactly. games. Exactly, exactly, and uh, it it just combines a few things that I absolutely love, and it is made in a way that is not feeling. Uh, kind of clunky and uh, okay. We try to put some mechanics together, but it is really smooth and very well balanced that way it all fits together so i really enjoy but, just playing but that being said i i very clearly and this may be already gameplay experience but the very first time playing this i was like i don't even know where to start but because but that's it's like so... with every game like that i the, the totally overwhelming sensory yeah. overwhelming is like What I, the heck have I gotten I have to, into? <laughs> I have to. I have to say, this is one of the games where I would really have liked uh, something like what uh, Jamie Stegmaier does with the "Here's what you should do yeah. on your first three 
turns, turns or, or here's the, an idea some, something you should this pursue is, uh, these exactly are, these, uh, and i think games i'm ex actually expecting that now from games coming out this year at spiel for example i'm pretty sure that people will incorporate something like this somewhere in those larger yeah. games i mean you don't need to have I, that with quirkle but you need to yeah, I was, maybe I was, I was about to say it's about those uh, just to, I mean, in video games, you have something like achievements that, yeah, like can, that can hint, hint at uh, uh, overarching strategies mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, give mm -hmm. you an idea what, what is an interesting thing to pursue. I'm kind of hoping for that to enter board games as well, just to give, a, just to give you a hint of this, this strategy and not telling you how the strategy works out, but... This is the path. Walk it and see where it, where it's yeah, where it leads you. Or you. Something. And I think um, it's it it doesn't take away from exploring the game. This will not having that that information in there will not make me put this game on the table less because I might have figured out something way quicker. Not at all. It actually maybe makes me put a game. Uh, on the table more often because I don't feel lost in one of the first games. And that is very crucial, at least for me personally, and I think very many other board gamers as well. The first, let's say, three experiences with a larger game like this, is it in whatever shape or form, satisfying or not, will determine will I put it on the table more often or not later on. So I think any game would benefit from, like, the the Jamie idea of Scythe. This is this is how, what you could do. I know it's a lot on the board, but don't worry. This and is the first five turns. You might want to think about that. And this is a this is a, a kind of perfect setup segue that I set up. Oh. Uh, there, it's it's not that there's not hints in, in this game. And this is something I also like, and that's uh, very common for uh, Uwe Rosenberg um, uh, in the manual, which is uh, blatantly German, but he usually appears on every page and tells you a little bit about uh, what uh, what's going on with that mechanic or what you can do. So there are hints like that in, in here. Um, it's not quite what I would... I'm I'm a simple man. I need someone to tell me what. That's why I'm married. I, <laughs> I just need someone. Oh, I love you too. <laughs> go in that direction, and um, husband, go. <laughs> uh, but that that brings me to, to to the manual. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this is certainly also a game where the first time you play it, you will have at least one person at the table sitting with manual on hand the entire time because you will. There is so many rules. In fact, I'm. I'd be surprised if I not uh, explained something wrong or missed something again, um, because there is a lot going on here. And you probably, for one, I, I would say you could read through the rules and then play. But the good thing about these games is that usually it's a good idea to play through them and then read the rules for each section. At least that's what works for us. Yeah. Here. And I mean, the, the manual is set up in a way that you read and play, read and play with yes. those phases. And it, they are very short sections. And then there's the two books that Daniel's holding where you uh, have yeah. like a, like a, yeah, Let's, a list of all the cards that are in there specifically uh, so, telling you what they do and stuff. So see? Every card is numbered. So good luck. Uh, no. I actually, I, I, I prefer this. Yeah. Uh, over uh, the version where you, have, where you have every card yeah, uh, picture exactly. on, on here. Exactly. This is way more. If it, uh, then again, uh, if you take a look at how many tables are in here, you immediately realize why they didn't do the let's make a picture. I don't card. need to identify a card by the picture. The number is totally fine, especially in these with these cards where there's just a lot of icons on it telling you what they do and you get a bit more of a, well of an explanation, maybe what the arrows mean between the icons. Talking about explanation, now you might be wondering what's this third rule book that we have here, and it is no rule book at all. This is an almanac uh, that explains to you what the things that the Vikings were using are. It's, it's a, history. Yeah, it's, a, it's we have in, in Germany, we have these uh, books called Was ist was, which is like, what is what, uh, to roughly translate, which kind of just uh, are thematic books explaining one thing. And this is almost like that. This is like the the 
uh, what is what oh, for Vikings uh, for for Vikings yeah. and uh, yeah going going in here first of all talking about uh, specific uh, Vikings that are uh, or the the areas why these islands are uh, chosen because they actually shipped around there up to what this uh, mystery meat that I was obtaining actually was composed of and uh, here I can see it's a uh, <coughs> pig and this uh, wild boar and uh, elk. Elk and deer and reindeer. Yes. All the, by the way, they have very yummy uh, reindeer and, sausages up and, in Norway. So just saying. And there's also. Ooh, yeah. And then there's also the part where your German is kind of biting you in the ass because I uh, was misreading something as Wikipedia, but it was actually Viking outside, which is. Um, <laughs> How can you? Uh, misread that it which doesn't is, look the same. I was I was surprised that Wikipedia was already available for for Vikings, but the thing is in German Viking is Wikinger with a W, and if it starts with Wiki, yeah, twenty first century yeah, first world problems. If, if there's a Wiki, wiki uh, Transformer has to fall. Yeah, so but this is all all those information in there is. What I really like that you get the the little extra and stuff. Um, not saying that it is not present in other games, but they start to come up maybe a bit more obviously with little tips uh, in the manual. But not every player on the table reads the manual. So if that little tip there is somehow translated to each player's area i would really love that uh in future games but we're getting there with with this one yep. so uh shall we rate one wiki two wiki i'm, I'm sneaking up on three the other camera wiki. <laughs> and, and just looking at the camera which is... <laughs> yeah i um two thumbs up this is, this is um, although this takes uh, a little bit of time to set up and, and play. This is certainly one of the games I I'd like to play again, and I want to try different stuff stuff yeah. out again. Um, and um, and I just want a puzzle. I, I want think, a Tetris puzzle. <laughs> I think that's the that's the uh, biggest compliment you can can give to something like that. It's like yeah, I, not only do I enjoy playing it, but I I enjoy discovering it anew every time and uh, and try something, something else that probably will weigh not. But then I. There's so much to, to do here. Uh, if we get to that point, I can also see this being a really good game in trying to just get better at mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. doing doing that. Yeah. Um, so let's hop into funny stories and experiences. And now you can talk a bit more about your despair in the first ever game where you were yeah, constantly... I, the, this thing that uh, happened while he was deciding what to do, that happened a lot in the first game. And you were saying a lot, I, I have no clue what I'm going to do here. I, yeah. I, the funny thing, I didn't feel the despair that you felt, but I had no clue if what I was doing actually yeah, but you, you, pushed me forward. It was just like, oh, this is a pretty spot. Let's go there. You, usually, <laughs> usually uh, in in most uh, most games, for me, it's I'm I'm looking at the game from a distance and then uh, pick out one or two things uh, uh, and then say, okay. I'll try to pursue that, and uh, that probably leads me to, to victory, and then well, you can do something with it. I'm, there are games where you horribly burn and crash with that, because it turns out that the two things I picked were not the ones that actually matter uh, in the grand scheme of things. But uh, We talked about that with colonists. But, not every game is a colonist but, game. <laughs> but that, that may happen. Here, it's like... I know I have to fill up these spaces. I see that there are, the, there are the, the islands to discover, there are houses to build, and I know that's probably involved with winning the game. But then you are like, if I start discovering islands and building houses, I also need the tiles to cover them to uh, get rid of the, the negative victory points. But to do that, I need uh, to discover the islands. I need ships. And if I have ships, should I go plundering? It's like uh, this. Yep. You, you, it, you have this uh, mid-game despair. You, you have don't really the, have the, yeah. the red line you can follow. Exactly. Uh, you had the all-game despair, and I had halfway through. Um, so we were in phase 
four or five and this home space here was not even halfway filled and I um, had decided in the first game I'm not going to get houses and I'm not going to get islands because I b b all, more than halfway through the game and I haven't even filled half of my port yeah, and, and then it speeds up like hell and it's like um, round six I was like oh, I should have gotten that island yeah. I could have gotten a house yeah. the, I still the, have enough I think the first game we both had our boards entirely filled covered. and nothing uh, and nobody uh, the both of us we didn't buy an island and we didn't uh, get uh, any other houses and stuff no I, we in the last round we got the houses that we could fill with the resources here like yeah. the cheapy ones um, I, I mean, filling this up entirely is worth 18 points. So, I know. Uh, if you if you end the game, the game actually uh, ends uh, after after your last feast. Um, so you still get money, but you don't get any bonus uh, items from from here. But uh, since you you get the the money, you um, can cover yeah. up some stuff or uh, yeah. yeah. And um, <laughs> uh, I the the first round ever that we played, I had um, the starting card was really good for me. For anybody with Wheaton's disease, there is a card in there that says you can uh, add plus one or plus two to um, the blue and uh, orange die down at the plundering combat kind of part. And I was plundering the heck out of it. I did almost... Uh, you had two of those special shapes from forging and stuff, and I had all the rest of them. It was so much fun to do mm. the Tetris thing there. And, and I didn't really have to go. You? And I rolled really high. I rolled well. And then I had the plus two. So I could go for um, pushing for the, the crown that needs a 16. And I didn't really have to go for the eight or ten blue shapes. So I had the funny things going on and could fill the tiny little pieces in between with uh, coins and ore a lot. Uh, thing I, I just want to want to mention because uh, I actually should have read this before, but I didn't. Um, and but I like that it's there. Um, the uh, this not only explains you what card is doing what, but it also explains to you these are the resources. How do you get that, and what it is needed for? Um, so uh, you also get a little bit of explanation of what the islands are and specifically for the tiles you were talking about. Something I do appreciate is there is a table that actually tells you how many of spaces are covered by that particular shape without having to, to count them. Not that it's uh, impossible for someone to divine what uh, how many how many spaces is, but it's these little touches that, that I do like uh, uh, about the game. Yeah. And but yeah. starting starting to read stuff. Don't we uh, are? I but uh, as I said, uh, the uh, things. I think in the last game we actually made made a mistake, which I just realized, which uh, wasn't that big of a mistake, but shows you how how Involved. much is going on that you're not seeing that. So if you flip over the islands, uh, you put money on all the other islands that have not been flipped, essentially uh, increasing their value until they are flipped and that money goes away. I think we just placed one coin on there and now I see here it says two coins. So uh, No, this, we had the double coins. Did we place yeah. double coins? Mm -hmm. I thought I just placed one coin. No. But yeah, that's the, the kind of... You need uh, ideally you need uh, someone who's paying attention to the rules, yeah, someone to, who's paying attention to playing the game, which yeah. is also kind of uh, at least for the first two or three games, um, it's a little bit annoying because you can't really get into the game if you always have to double check on every rule. But that's how it is with yeah, these games. you learn you yes. learn fast. But uh, these were the experiences. I think. Are you ready to um, guess? What painting we're gonna have? What game is gonna come up on Draw for Initiative? Colorful. Since you already set yourself in scene with the light closer to you, you can now tell me what. What I'm gonna I? put a halo on you in I editing. Directly. <laughs> I'm gonna have light, flare light, glare. I'm going to sit here next time with the light box on my head. No, you you're gonna have it in in post production. I'm gonna uh, have the JJ Abrams oh, on oh. you. Oh, oh. I'm gonna put a filter just oh. on you. 
Um, but the game that we're gonna paint or that uh, we painted and that's gonna come uh, out is a feast for Odin. No, it's a competitive game. A feast for Odin. I said no. What? Which part of the word no did you not understand? Beginning, middle, end. Just asking. Middle. Okay. No. <laughs> Okay, no, 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 for real. Don't distract me. I have to get, give, give you good hints. And you, of course, too. And you can uh, write in the comment section down below what you think the game is going to be that we're going to paint. Uh, guess along. Um, it's a competitive game. Uh, Sheldon would love it. Sheldon from Big Bang Theory would love the, the theme. Um, is, there is... Is it about flags? No. Yeah? No. Um... It, uh, it plays in the early industrial age in a country on the other side of the globe from, from our um, perspective. And uh, you could sing a song from the Pet Shop Boys and uh, would pretty much, uh, well, say what the goal or one of the goals of the game is you have to uh, juggle a couple of things that you got to do and one of them is communication one of them is communication mm -hmm. I see I see that sounds to me like a revolutionary design <laughs> you got it <laughs> first go <laughs> Yes, it is. it's quite revolutionary. But I don't want to derail your hint giving. Oh, I love you so much. This so, is amazing. So uh, I'll let you guys follow along uh, that road and uh, see where it gets you. I'm having a party here. This is awesome. <laughs> Did you get it? I'm very sure you got it. You're all very smart people. So, look go, forward. Go we. St. You got a we now? Then go we. St. Um, yeah, we we. St. As the German says. <laughs> go wescht. <laughs> no, it's peaceful there. Now, you, could, you so. didn't even understand what I was saying because it's the, the st. S-C-H-T is the sound I'm making when I'm German speaking the S-T. That was totally useless knowledge. Yeah, I, I wonder, should I cut that? No, I won't. And uh, this is all uncut. Anyway, we're well, going to go now. Time well wasted. Wasted, yes. So you make the Sean Connery wasted. Anyway, we're going to go now. Have a great rest of the weekend. Enjoy. Maybe you've got some time to play a board game. That would be very lovely. We're going to be back on next Sunday with a new game to share from our collection. If you have any questions or comments, the comment section is yours. Fill it with wonderful words. You can definitely also fill it with your guess of what game is going to come up on Draw for Initiative. You can... Um, also, communicate with us on any of the social media uh, pages in the description box below. Plus, uh, Board Game Geek, we do have geek lists there for this format and also Draw for Initiative. So you can, well, do the talking there to us. We would love that. And um, if you, well, maybe are new to the channel and liked what you saw and want to see more, well, hit that subscribe button. Also, hit the bell button so that you're notified whenever I release a new video. Uh, you will have to check the I want to get an email uh, at the window that pops up when you uh, hit that bell button. And uh, other than that, I'm gonna see you on the next videos we are gonna see you next sunday and now my love I after was, all that talking I say was, the good word i was trying to do a wikingapedia which means i know vikings walking around on their feet which Pedia, would be I know, latin. latin oh so many languages can you say goodbye now goodbye you no, took don't away be. my you took away my yes language. because you did the russian on the board german lesson uh, yeah. <laughs> and that was one. that was not very nice on the audio. Russia is this. It make noise. Now say goodbye. No, not to me, to the folks. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Say goodbye. 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 Happy happy day.
Happy goodbye. Happy goodbye.